here officially. Okay, hello everybody. Hey, this is Chris. Uh, I think we're gonna zero viewers. Okay, we got a little bit until people actually sign in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll have we'll have people like checking in here. So I'm gonna wait till there's some more, more folks. This is literally the first one we've ever live broadcasted. Um, Micah does it periodically at the PDX SAS meetup, so like, he's got like camera equipment and audio. Yeah, every one of them is up. So he's got like a full channel full of these things. So. What do you mean zero viewers? Yeah, we'll get we'll give it like five or ten here before we like kick off. Cool, and we will wait for you to come back before we start. And then you can just send somebody else down there to hang out for five or ten minutes, and they can send somebody else out. <laughs> that was so cool. I assume you jokes would stop you. Tenure. Tenure. <laughs> oh, tenure. <laughs> you should, someone submit a question. I want to see what uh, I want to see what it does. You have computer. Mike is telling you to send me, so that's like that. Pretty cool. So the movie about the worst part of the next is sixes. Oh, it's here. Made by Motorola. I like Motorola. That sucks. So I'm asking a question. It has a plastic screen? No. No. Hey. Yes, and just ask a question. Well, I don't know. Is there a question? Yeah. Zero viewers. Zero viewers. Oh, okay, there's everybody in the room. I see you all. For me, not be on camera so twice. Cool. I don't need to. Yeah. Do no, no, I'm on the webcam. It just. Yeah. 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 The thing says zero. Hello, hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Hey, you made it. Grab a grab a chair and a laptop and let's do it. Is there anything to respond to? Mm -mm. Um, the guest Wi-Fi is out on the whiteboard right there. So just go write that down. Um, by the way, guest Wi-Fi, it's out on the whiteboard. If you want to hop online and follow along. We are going to go hands-on today, so grab your laptop. Let's get on the Wi-Fi. It's P2 Guest, and the password is high order. Actually, I, I got gotcha. you. High order bit. P2 Guest. And I just announced that to the entire internet, so <laughs> they know our, our guest password. Hello, hello. You made it. Welcome. You're on camera. <laughs> All right, we'll get started here in just a few minutes as people kind of, kind of shuffle in. So for those of you that just got here, if you want to start by pulling up plunker.co, uh, that's what we're going to use to write. We don't need to install anything. We're doing this completely on the internet. It's gonna be great. Plnkr.co. Plunker. I love the glowing TV in the back. It sh the reflection shows in the camera like perfectly. No, not at all. Not for me, at least. Can you guys still see? Okay. Test, test, test. Yeah, uh, yeah. If you could just turn that up as loud as possible, that'd be great. Nope. <laughs> Max, grab a chair. Everybody, this is Max. My friend Max. Max is everybody. He's diving into the world of code for the first time the last couple of weeks. So. You are in the right place. 
In the world. <laughs> All right, and can you guys see the slides link that I posted on the event? You can go ahead and just pull up the slides early if you want. Uh, on the um, Google Plus event is a set of slides. And I'll actually go ahead and just put it on the screen if you want to. Uh, I'll put it. In, I'll put it in FlowDoc. Actually, I'll just put it up on the screen. How's that sound? Even better, we have a chat in the Hangout. Let's do that. You will have had to have been on the Google Plus event to be on the Hangout to get to the chat internet. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. Oh. Alfred, do it on the other screen. Ah, it's not doing it on the other screen. Hang on. This is really easy. Just go to slides.com. Uh, just go to slides.com slash ill epic. And of course, I'll, I'll go through the slides you know, right here so we can all see it. Join us. Go to slides.com slash ill epic. I was really into the Beastie Boys in the 90s, so unfortunately, <laughs> that has stuck with me. <laughs> okay. Good, and, and and put it in the Hangout. But if you were in the Hangout, you were able, you were at the event, so you would have seen it anyway from the event. But you aren't on the event. Um, I'm, it's right there. I'm trying to hang on. It, if I command L it, it, it's going to the wrong screen, which sucks. Alfred. I, if there was only someone in this office that knew Alfred, he's going to beanbag it up. <laughs> Grab a chair. OK. I think we'll give it two more minutes, and then we'll, uh, we'll get started up at 10 after. For front end, this is pretty high. <laughs> How you doing down there on the floor? This is pretty high for the, the Drupal front end meetup, which is awesome. I like the. Layout. Everyone can you can Everyone jump look. in here. What up? Everyone look. One, two, three. Cool. <laughs> uh, just just go to slides.com slash illepic and you'll see all of my slide decks. Yeah, that's that's the easiest way to do it. So just go to illepic. And that's me on Twitter. And you'll see uh, the thingy. All right, let's build Angular app. Boop. Welcome, guys. Hey, uh, uh, Wi-Fi is P2 guest, and the password is high order bit. I think it was the dude who installed the the network. No, it's not me. I'm not responsible for that. BIT. I recommend uh, Chrome tonight. If you guys, uh, if you guys have the option, make it Chrome. We don't need to install anything to do what we're doing tonight. We're gonna do it all through. Yes, I am. That's why the the thingy. Um, all right. Okay. I'm going to start screen sharing, so you guys should be able to, to see what I've got going on here. So give me just a second to get that working. OK. Cool. So if you are if you're currently on the Google Hangout, uh, you should be seeing the slide deck for this. And we're just going to kind of kick it off. So welcome. Um, how many people here are Drupalers? Actually, work in the Drupal sort of sort of thing a lot, 
right? Yeah, a little bit over there? Okay. Um, so I tried a little bit to tailor this toward people that have done JavaScript in Drupal, okay? Um, who here has written JavaScript specifically for Drupal using Drupal's kind of conventions? Okay, all right. Um, all we're basically going to do is kind of talk about why um, why we're we really shouldn't be thinking like that and why we should be thinking sort of like this. Now, we're not going to be able to go just automatically use this in Drupal. It's really hard to use Angular in Drupal. So, um, yeah, it's just more about a way of thinking. So, if you guys would like, um, I've got this thing linked all over the place. Um, it's on the Twitter event. It's on Facebook. It's on G+. It's right here. It's kind of a big jumble of whatever. Um, I think you can actually go look me up on Plunker. You can just go right here. Go to plunker.co. Um, it looks like this. That's P-L-N-K-R dot co. Everyone go ahead and just take a little bit of time and make a Plunker account. Um, you can use GitHub to sign in, which I recommend you do. Um, if you don't have a GitHub account, I'll wait. <laughs> it's really important. Go ahead and get that set up because um, a lot of things that we're going to be doing with Angular and online are, are kind of kind of require the GitHub uh, side of things. So Plunker is cool. Um, Plunker lets you do pretty much any kind of JavaScript in the browser directly. It's great. But specifically, find me at plunker.co slash elepic. Looks like this. <laughs> Thanks, Plunker. OK. All right. Hang on. That's the wrong thing. <laughs> Plunker, what are you doing? OK, hang on. Did it work? OK, if I click a person, it's users slash person name. So it's plnkr dot co slash users slash elepic, which is me. I'm that everywhere. So plnkr dot co slash users slash I L L E P I C. Come on in. Come on in. Grab a grab a chair. There's some chairs right down there. You can even hang out on the Google Hangout if you want a higher res like local version. And were you able to get the login info the last time you were here, Marlene? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Are you guys all able to go see this thing? This is the thing we're gonna build. You don't see anything private, Plunk. Hang on, let's make it unprivate. I want to make. Are you guys not able to see this thing? Okay, I'm actually gonna go. I'm gonna go make sure this is not private. Hmm, that's interesting. Only users who know the URL. Okay, let me make this unprivate just a second. Does anyone know how to do that? Okay, we will do this. I, I swear. Um, can someone help me out and make this unprivate? Awesome UI plucker. Okay. Do the thing. Open. So on the very bottom left is yeah, private plunk. Yeah. Try to change that. No dice. Only users who know the URL will be able to view it. You're crazy, Plunker. Okay. Okay. In that case, I'm going to tweet it. Yo. I'm not going to fork it quite yet, so I'm. Nah. Just go to Twitter. Look for me. There you go. That's easy. Yay, Twitter. 
I could read this out. D P E X I seven. No, just go ahead and hit Twitter. Um, I didn't know that was uh, such private. I'll figure out how to un unlock that down. Okay. So basically, if you guys get a chance to open this up, um, this is what it looks like. What's that? Um, you can actually go right here to editor options on the far right and make it do whatever you want. I'm actually going to turn up the font size. You guys let me know when this looks right. You like that? You guys go in the back? Okay, 23. Awesome. Okay. And let's go take a look at the plunker we're going to build. <laughs> their, their official stance is... Oh, that's crazy. Okay. The, the issue is, is I've got this URL running around already, so I don't want to quite change the URL. So um, I've tweeted it. Go ahead and hit it on Twitter. Look for Illepic. Um, you'll see my stuff there. But And we can also demo it right here because it's all super visible for us to look at. So we're actually going to build this little app right over here. And it's super simple, but it's going to kind of show off some things that Angular is really good at, and that is when we play with data, we can get the, uh, the browser window and the stuff in the browser to respond um, without once. This is something I really want to stress tonight. We are never once going to select an element in the DOM. So who here's used jQuery? Everybody? All right. Dollar sign thingy. We are never <laughs> once going to dollar sign thingy. OK, we actually. I, that's right. We're going to write raw JavaScript tonight. So we, and this is, this is the cool thing about Angular, is we treat HTML like HTML, and we treat data like data, and we let Angular form the glue between the two things. Um, so yeah, just a quick little demo of, uh, of what Tea Time does. Looks like this. Um, we got a little tea shop downstairs. And there's a wall of teas, and I want to try them all. I want to try a different tea every single day. And I have a terrible memory, so I can't remember the tea that I tried yesterday. So I want to be able to document my teas. I want to make like a grid of teas that looks like the wall down there, and then take notes, and then take pictures of the tea. And then I can be like, this is my wall of teas. And it looks like this. So I should be able to like go make a tea and be like, this is a yummy tea. And then I want to be like, this was good. Okay, and then I want to add a picture, and I'm going to cheat and just totally um, copy an image from one of the prior ones. But since it's a uh, lorem pixel, I'm just going to pick a random number on the end, and I'm going to add a T. And all I'm going to do is change data, and it's going to add it to our view, just automatically. Oh my god, amazing, right? Isn't that incredible? So there's no selections. There's no um, if-thens. There's no, uh, yeah. So. I also want to be able to, at any moment, click a T and then say, you know, I don't know, no, change my mind, he sucks, okay? And then I'm going to hit enter. Now, two things there. Did you notice that when I was typing, it was changing in real time? Um, and when I selected it, I was also able to, to change it up, up, in the, uh, up in the form as well. So. Two things, this data, this, this, all these linkages that are kind of happening because of Angular, I really want you guys to pay attention to that. Um, I'd also like to be able to select something and then say, oh, never mind, I actually don't want to select it and hit reset and have everything go away and just go back to a starting state. And I'd also like to, at any moment, mouse over one of these things and just, just kill it. So I'm going to kill this T. I'm going to hit remove T. It's gone for good. Um, but also, I want to get back to a starting state. I'm going to hit reset all T's. Okay, pretty cool, right? Now, last thing that's going to be a feature of this is we're going to have like, okay, T here, T, T, T. T doesn't even sound like a word anymore. I've been saying it so much. All right, and we're going to add something. And this is the big kicker. Um, I don't know if we'll be able to get to this part of the app today, but it's something that's pretty neat and relatively easy to do. If I refresh the page, completely just blow everything away, and we come back to our app. 
my data is still there. The data is persistent. Okay, how do we do that? How are we getting this data again? Um, you can all be doing this right now. Hit this little eyeball in the upper right hand corner of this plunker. Remember, you can get to this plunker by going to Twitter. That's a, not my tweets. Okay, there we go. And yeah, you can go and actually see me whining about random things on Twitter, but also click that plunker. Right, you don't, yes, so you don't have my updates because this was going to be a cool demo of how to use Firebase and persistent across like all your connections simultaneously and that got out of control really quick. So we're just using HTML5 local storage, which is awesome. You should all be using it. It's like a little tiny baby Mongo database on every web page, right? It's awesome. Or key value store, as I would be corrected by uh, grumpier people. Okay, so really quick. Um, if in case you're brand new to jQuery, right, we all know the document.ready. Document.ready says all of the DOM is in the page. We can start messing with it. Um, and then we would have an element, and we would click the element. And then when we click the element, we're going to go like, I don't know, go do something, OK? And that's fine for small pieces of functionality. We do this in Drupal. It's the only thing we've got in Drupal to be able to manipulate the output that comes from Drupal. Whether it's WordPress, Joomla, it doesn't matter, right? We've got a back end going to produce a whole bunch of HTML, throw it at the client side. And then we have to say, OK, I got a bunch of HTML. Now I need to do something with it after the fact. Um, this is great up to a point. But the moment, and, and what we're kind of showing here in this little, this little jQuery demo is, let's say I need to go out and get some data from somewhere. We've got this you know, dollar sign dot get to some random URL. I would like to take that data, wrap it in some wrappers, loop through it, add some other wrappers and classes and other goodies to it, and then print it into the page, okay? This looks awful and it's really hard to figure out what's going on here. I can't read this and just know what the intent is. And that's a huge problem with jQuery for the most part. Like it's super functional, you can get into some pretty nasty, you know, Drupal DOM soup and get to work on it, but nobody can ever read it besides you ever again. Okay, that's usually how it goes with jQuery. So um, this little demo of like go somewhere, get something, get the data, and then render the data out, in some kind of a repeating pattern. Um, this is what it actually looks like in Angular. Okay, the font size is bigger. <laughs> so this is, uh, this is actually a smaller number of lines. But we're not going to get too crazy into what this is doing quite yet. But I really want to point out that all we're saying is, hey, go to a URL. I really want to point this out. These are just my GitHub repos. GitHub has a public JSON feed. I can go there. Oop, there's all my repos. Okay, so I got JSON. And then, there we go. I'm going to return that data, super simple. And I'm going to give it to my HTML to go do something with. Okay, now, <clears throat> instead of taking our data, come on, Envy, come on, get, get in here. I see you sneaking. Here, you should, there should be a chair right on back there next to Max. All right, so um, what we do with HTML in Angular, and this is one of these things before we start building, I want to make sure I got enough time here, um, is we probably all came from the semantic world of HTML where you wanted to keep your HTML pure and clean and your CSS was going to be very semantic. Yes, I can see you at peace with your HTML over there, right? So um, I want you to throw that idea away because HTML is treated as a first-class citizen in Angular. And what that means is we treat HTML as our controllers. We treat HTML as our um, as markup that runs applications. Okay, so therefore, we're going to start decorating HTML to do some stuff. And you're going to look at it and be like, that looks like a... Wait, that looks like JavaScript in the DOM. That's a huge no-no, right? Whenever you saw, like something dot click in HTML before, you're probably like, that guy's a total noob, right, in JavaScript. Well, no. No, 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 no. We want to treat our HTML like it's building an interface for our controller to have a view. You're probably familiar with 
the concept of controllers and views and models from, from programming. And we don't really need to super care about that yet. But just to kind of like point this out, I can read this HTML. I know what's going on here. OK, look, main controller. Hey, main controller, that kind of lines up, right? Oh, I've got a button. Get repos. We're going to go out to my GitHub repo, and we're going to get some repos. OK, oh, wait, that lines up with that function. That's cool, all right? Now I've got this comments div down here. And you'll notice that all the markup here actually lines up to all the nasty markup that we were concatenating onto a big ass uh, JavaScript screen, uh, string here. Instead, I'm just putting it into HTML. It's totally readable. I can almost read what this output would actually look like. And you can see, OK, oh, I've got an ng repeat, repo in repos. Hey, we've got a scope.repos here. That kind of lines up, right? That makes sense. For every one of the things, got it. Let's go through it and start printing stuff out of it. Well, we just happen to have this thing running. Did I actually link to it? I didn't link to it because I'm dumb. So let's go here. I think this is it. Yeah, let's take a look. All right. There's my little repos, go get repos button. So let's go to GitHub. Let's get the JSON data, and then let's render it in a loop. That simple, right? So we just went across the internet, got a bunch of stuff, parsed it, rendered the HTML, and stuck it into a page in how many lines of code? Like a couple? You know, that's awesome, right? Super, super clean um, and really, really uh, readable. OK, so we need to kind of um, approach thinking about um, JavaScript in, in a little bit of a different way. I recommend everyone when they're getting into uh, JS for the first time to go read the Stack Overflow post. It's amazing. It's like, how do I think in Angular if I have a jQuery background? Um, and we're not going to get too much in this. We're not going to beat this into too many heads tonight. But suffice it to say, you tweet the link. It's on the thing. All right, here. Here, I'm going to tweet the link to the presentation, OK? Does that work for you? Yes, no? Sure. Yes. Okay. All your slides are just sitting in slides.com. Yeah, slides.com. You can go to slides.com anytime. Um, Ill Epic. Yep. Did I? What well, now? Go ahead. Hit that. Jump in. Yeah, something we haven't really solved yet is I have a link and I need to give it to ever physically in front of me. This is really hard. Okay, so just go to Twitter. Um, all right. So basically, the summary of this whole thing is just amazing post about all the differences and how to think is in the J in the time of jQuery, um, you design a page, you go build it in markup, and then you style it, and it looks beautiful. And then you say, now I'm going to add some interaction. Now I'm going to add a click or a hover or a thingy or a whatever. Um, and at the smallest level, jQuery works phenomenal to do that. At the bigger level, it's much, much harder. Um, it gets out of control really, really quick. So on the Angular side, you have to stop and think about what you're building first. You have to architect your HTML. You have to architect your, um, your DOM and your data model and then build an application to that. Okay, so this is a little different process. Instead of sort of starting with like your end view state of what you want and have it look beautiful and then add some stuff, you start with this idea of like, okay, what does the data look behind that? And how does changing that data cause my, my stuff to shift around? Um, yeah, you have to start with what you want to accomplish and then design your application to reach that point. It's a little different process. It's from the back forward instead of the forward back. Okay, so... Um, as we're going to try to live code a little bit here, uh, keep in mind that most of the stuff we're going to do to cause changes on the screen are coming from only changing data. Okay, There is no, if something happens, then go do something. Right? We're going to just change some, uh, uh, in the Angular um, terminology, we're going to change the model. And because the model is so important to Angular, when it changes, lots of things are going to happen for us automatically that we don't have to go right. Okay? Then we also have the ability that when we change, say, for instance, a text field in Angular, um, other, that will cause a change in the model, which will then trigger changes again. So we'll be able to change things in a form and then very rapidly see those changes happen 
um, inside of our page automatically. Uh, once again, HTML is a first-class citizen. Um, we have a concept called directives in Angular that basically allows us to define our own HTML elements. We're not going to get into that today, but we are going to use some pre-built ones. You're going to see ng-things all over the place. I had to have this explained to me. ng, angular. ng equals angular. I didn't catch that. What's that? That's never really Right, and uh, angular, anger, I don't know. So angular, there you go. You've got a, you've got the ng. So whenever you see ng, something's going on in angular. We just got to figure out what that is. Um, and I'm gonna just try to like, we we see the end result up here, um, and it most certainly did not look like this when we coded it. When I when I just didn't sit down and just magically bank this up because no, it this is you know like the fourth or fifth iteration of making this look clean and doing it r relatively the right way and I'm sure it can be even better, um, but we're gonna just kind of mess around um, and we might sort of end up at this final state. We might not. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Um, all right. So it's not quite magic. Like there's a little bit of this that seems like magic. It's just sort of like I did a thing and just magically this this thing responded. Um, when you understand how JavaScript treats objects in that, fun fact. <laughs> Shia LaBeouf. Look at that. He is, he is totally sparkling. Okay. I want, I want you guys to take a look at what we're going to do down here in the, uh, ignore Shia LaBeouf for a second. If I have a variable and we're going to call it, um, my object, okay, little JavaScript object, um, and let's add a little index called uh, index1. Okay. So this is how we define variables or objects in JavaScript. What's that? Ha <laughs> ha, thanks, you caught it before I screwed it up. Okay, um, I have an object, so if I then say, my object, what should come back? An object that says index one and stuff. Right, key value array. Right. Now, what happens if I do this? Do I have two separate copies of this object? No. What happens if I say my other object, right? Okay, well, there, that sounds right, yeah. Okay, what happens if I change the value in the first one? Here, let's add a, let's add a new thing. Um, thingy, add thingy, okay, equals blurb. We're modifying the first object, blurb. What happens to the other object? It doesn't, it doesn't change. Would you bet on that? Uh, not based on your... Not on that <laughs> How did my other object get thingy.blurp? My other object dot thingy. Pass by reference. Okay. Just, just to kind of let me let me see if I can zoom in on this for for those watching at home, okay. To go back over it because this is a really key part of Angular, and this is something like no one explained to me when I was starting out with this. Um, if we describe an object, and this is very unique to objects in JavaScript, they don't do this for strings or or other primitives. Um, if I have an object, and then I assign a, I have a variable that is an object, and I send another variable to that. No matter where I change it, all of the other things see that reference. They're passed by reference. So I've got this, like, I've got this singular point, um, which allows me to, to observe that. And then if all of these other things are sort of watching that, that base object, they'll change in accordance, which is pretty cool. You had a question? Yeah, so can you actually modify my other object and then push it back to my Let's find out. So I go my other object dot yet Another thingy. I'm really bad at this. Bloop. Okay. Bloop. Okay. And uh, which one do you want me to print? Boom. Oh. Okay. 
Objects, objects specifically. That's specific to no, that's specific to objects handled in JavaScript. Okay. That's how Angular works. And literally all of the magic you're going to see from us changing some random model and then all of this cool stuff happening comes from this, pretty much this basic part of, Angular, or of JavaScript, which is I change a thing, everything else sees it. And so what they do is they watch these little values change and we, we fire a bunch of events. Okay, that's enough Shia LaBeouf there. Um, so just to kind of talk about what we're going to build here. And I'm, I'm going to go to at least 7.30 tonight. I don't know. I might go a little bit longer just to like lock and load. If you need to leave early, I won't, I won't be offended. Um, so here's what I, I want. We have this array of T's, right? T objects is what we're going to call them. They've got a title, they've got a description, they've got a photo, okay, pretty much. Um, I want to be able to see them in a pretty way, printed out on my page, and I want to be able to add random T objects. Um, I would also like to store that entire array between page refreshes, um, and I want to see that when I add a T, I want to see it immediately on the page, okay? Um, pretty straightforward, click a T, I want to edit it. Now, I really wanted to edit this in place. Like, I wanted to click it, have us edit it, like, right there inside the DOM, and then hit save or something. And that turned into, like, a little bit more of a pain in the butt than I was hoping for. So um, we, instead, what's going to happen is when we click a T, it's going to go back up to that original form. So we got this one form for input um, and editing, OK? Um, and of course, I want to see the UI change when I'm in an edit state. OK, I clicked a thing. I want to see that thing change. I want to see other things around the page react to that. Super important. OK. Um, if you guys have this presentation link, these are really, really great. Um, just really great learning resources for Angular. They've helped me out tremendously. Um, actually, uh, this dude at Angular course, he actually just started charging for these videos, um, like, like last week. Um, this is actually one of the best 30 videos I've ever used. Um, he'll have some demos out, but you should go check it out. Um, Ex-Google employee, really cool, trying to do his own thing. So um, really great there. But for us Drupalers, I want to show you one thing. Sorry, I, I promise we'll code here, but I, just want, I do want to show you one neato thing. This is Drupal 8. This is not Drupal 8. But the data for this page is going to come from Drupal 8 running uh, all of its new REST modules on the back end. So we are able to say, show me a node. I don't know. Let's go to node 1. Look at that. Watch it change in real time. OK? We are literally going out to this Drupal instance right here, getting JavaScript or JSON returned from Drupal, Drupal 8, and we get to see what these things look like. It's pretty. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is a hipster ipsum. That's the same mind. <laughs> Organic 90s swag. There you go. Right. Yeah. Pour over slow carb flannel. There you go. Um, so. <laughs> Yeah, so we're actually just asking it, like, hey, give me, um, give me node, uh, give me data from my node, and let me print it out, right? Um, just actually announced, like, three days ago, is the ability to use this um, to communicate back to a Drupal 8 instance and, you know, add and edit and change nodes. There's a complete RESTful API to Drupal 8 now, for the most part. So we can communicate to it add fields, um, change, delete notes, all whatever. It doesn't matter what your, what your front end looks like. So anyway, this is cool. This is, this is the Drupal we were promised. Here's a little slider demo. We load node 1, and as we switch the slider, right, we see it change in real time because we're going out to the, to the service and having it returned, which is pretty cool. And of course, all we're doing here is we're changing a model. You change a model in the, uh, in the view, and that allows us to react, which is pretty cool. So that's headless Drupal. It's pretty rad. Great. Um, OK, that plunker, which we all had a chance to, to look at. Let's make sure we've all got a plunker account. Let's code a little bit. Let's talk about what's going on here. Oh, by the way, every presentation I ever do, I have to include a picture of my cat. So there's my random stupid cat picture. Uh, <laughs> one of the many cats. <laughs> all right. 
<laughs> and with that, so I'm I'm actually gonna I have my cheat sheet down here, so it seems like I'm able to just to like type all this from memory. I'm not actually typing all this from memory. I've got a cheat sheet. So let's talk about a little bit about how Plunker works, which is really cool. Um, we can go inject libraries really super, super easy. Um, if you go over to this little book icon on the right-hand side, go ahead and just start. Anybody just go start your own um, uh, your own plunk. Yes, sir. Is this how you got 1.3 in there? Yes, yep. Is it only 1.3? Uh, 1.3 is... What's that? Really? I, I go... Right there, yeah. Actually, as a matter of fact, I'm the one that added the 1.3 library to it two nights ago. So I think, it let me, anyway, I, I was led to believe that. Um, so if you guys click this little magic wand right next to the word Angular, <laughs> this <clears throat> unmagical wand, you'll see that we've got this AngularJS.org sitting right up in the top, OK? Um, which is cool. means we've got Angular loading in. Do me a favor, grab the script, and let's move it down to the bottom of the body tag. Why do we do that? Full cool reasons. Yeah, yeah. All right, so you can see, all right, this ensures our DOM is here, OK? Um, the jQuery days, we would keep our JavaScript up in the header because we had a DOM.ready event. Yo. Oh, uh, go down to the editor options gear icon to the lower right and choose Monokai. Yes. And it does a really great auto refresh, which I love. It's so cool. Okay, so when I have it up, you can see that I've got a hello, <clears throat> hello plunker. Um, let's just verify that things are wired up. So we're going to, let's go mess with our style.css. And let's just test against our h1 and just say, I don't know, color green. Yay, CSS works. Plunker's awesome. Development's this easy, guys. That's all you need to do. All right. Who needs an IDE? Okay, so we are going to attempt to write. Uh, we're going to attempt to do some stuff here without writing a lot of code, uh, a lot of JavaScript so far. So let's, let's see if we can do this. Um, okay, so we know that when we run our script, it will have all of the prior DOM available to it. That's the super important part about moving our script to the bottom of the page. Now, we want to actually go and do one simple little thing, and that is right up here, follow along with me, hit your HTML tag, and we need to de define ng app. Let's call it whatever you guys want to call it. I'm going to call it um, tea time, which you can see from the demo. We're going to make some teas. We're going to see what it looks like right here. Okay. So we now have an application. Okay. This application should, um, yeah, should work great for us. Uh, should be Angular. Basically, sees this, says, okay. This is what I'm going to attach to. Everything inside of this, I'm going to treat as my full application, and we'll be able to go do some stuff with it. So let's do this. Bear with me here, sorry. OK. Hop on down to your script tag. We're going to do something really, really super simple here. We're going to type Angular, which is the Angular object we get to work with, dot module. Now, in the Angular world, everything is a module. And the reason for this is, is we want to be able to share our pieces of Angular all over the darn place. Okay, I want to give it to you. I want to take your modules. I want to be able to randomly have another module that can just depend on having like five other modules. It's it's supposed to be incredibly decoupled. Even our application is supposed to be a module. So treating a big app as just like another module that I might be able to at some point in the future inject somewhere else maybe. Okay, I know that inject doesn't mean anything yet. But just think about this idea of every app can just be used in another app that can be used in another app. And this gets to be kind of cool. So um, what do you think I'm going to name my app? Uh, tea time. Tea time. Let's do it. Here we go. Tea time. OK. Last thing. 
and this gets this trips everyone up. Why do I have two square brackets here? This is the most annoying thing in the world. What's <laughs> exactly, you're correct. It is, the start of the it is the start of the things we need. Okay, so what we get to do in Angular is we get to say, I might need these like 10 libraries. I might need these like 10 other things. Now, we don't need anything yet. They call this dependency injection, okay? And what we do is we go define the words that can fit in here so it becomes really easy for us to have an application that might need something like a database service that might need like the HTTP service to go make requests somewhere. Um, we put them in here, which is pretty cool. But we don't we don't need to really worry about that yet. That's that's the cool part. Okay. All right. So um, how do I bear with me one second? I'm looking at something here. I just want to look at a thing. I'm trying to get my yeah. Okay. Cool. Oh, that's a cat. I can't. Okay. Um, all right. Okay. Now, we have an app that wraps everything. We want to define a little tiny piece of functionality. We want to define a nice self-contained place where when I start messing with the data, I want the DOM to change. We call that a controller. Okay? So we actually want to go and define a controller on our body tag. So these two things together allow us to say this is where stuff is going to happen. Oops. Bear with me. There we go. Um, and I'm literally just going to call this TCTRL. Okay. Seems kind of obtuse. I've got an app and I've got a controller. When you start to think about it, like you can have multiple controllers on a page, or you can have multiple controllers in an application. Like I can have my like login controller, or I can have my like comments system controller. It starts to make sense. So we have this little controller right here. Pretty cool. All right, now for some conventions. We can't do a whole lot here yet until we define a controller. And now we're going to start screwing with the HTML. So it looks like this. We say controller. Why do I start with a dot? What's going on? What is, what's the, oops. <laughs> Busted. Um, why do I start with a dot? I'm just, a, I'm just, so you'll notice this is like a string. You've probably seen this in jQuery where you can just dot, 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 dot something as you move, as one thing passes to another. So we're saying, hey, Angular, on this module, add a controller. We could easily just do that instead. Okay, so like, don't let this confuse you, having the dot here. That threw me off. I'm like, why is there a dot at the beginning of this line? This doesn't make any sense to me. It is literally just the same as putting it on the end of the prior thing. Okay, so... Everything in Angular, you give a name. What, are we, what do we call this? TCTRL. OK. Now. All right. I just wrote a whole bunch there. Angular takes two things. And we're going we're gonna to expand this out. We're going to start adding some complexity on here. But we're going to say, hey, in this controller, all the controller is is just a function. Everything in JavaScript is just a function. You've seen this in jQuery before. Um, we're saying this controller is literally just going to run this function. OK, it's that simple. Give it a name. Give it a function. So Angular goes, oh, OK, I know I need to run this function. All right, this is the fun part. This took me forever. I even launched a site in Angular, and I barely understood what this was. So um, <laughs> anything inside this controller, like here, from the beginning to the end of it, is inside of the scope of the controller. I really want to hit that home, OK? So this isn't jQuery. I can't go select something in the head. 
I can't go select something, even though I can't do this because it's not legal HTML. I can't get to that diff because I'm not inside my controller. Okay, so Angular says, look, you name that controller T controller, you get what's in there, and that's it. Now, there's ways to get somewhere else. We're not going to go over that, but it's totally, totally feasible. But we have this nice, tight component of what I can go screw with. Okay, so we're going to screw with whatever's inside here, and we're going to put it right there, T controller, um, with this scope variable. This scope variable, for now, represents everything inside of ng controller. All right. It is, a, it is almost this, yes. I'm going to try really hard to get away from the jQuery like metaphors, but it is almost this. Yep, it's like this chunk of DOM. Okay, now what's cool is we can start adding stuff to the scope and we can start seeing it in the page. So here we go. Scope dot. Scope's an object. Scope's an object. Remember, if we screw with objects, we get to see it change in real time. Um, give me a variable name. Oh, <laughs> equals. Oh, okay. All right. I don't see it over here. All right. I gotta put it in something. All right. Angular is awesome. Uh, who, who here has played around with Mustache uh, or other like templating uh, engines like uh, Twig, Drupal eight, Twig? What up? All right. Pretty cool. All right. This is just like Twig. What do we call it too. Nope. Oh, magic. That's it. It's your first Angular app. It's all you need to know. Everything from here on out is just building on this concept of doing stuff with this scope variable. You're going to get real familiar with scope. All we are going to do from here on out, I really want to point out what's going on here. All we're doing from here on out is we're basically adding stuff to scope and changing stuff on scope. Angular takes care of the rest for us. Okay, so if I make this like Let's watch this change in real time. Uh, foo, bar, boop, of course. Plunker's doing a refresh, but there we see it. We've got a thing, right? It, it just shows up for us. Um, I'm actually going to go just use an example from, um, from my uh, from little app that we built. I've just got this little thing of like, here's my instructions, and it looks just like this. And this is a little contrived, but it works. Why did it not? Oh, right. <laughs> I need to change it over there. <laughs> All right. So here we go. Um, I've got it wrapped in a like an H something or other. Uh, let's see it. It is H2. And I'm just going to grab this and stick it in because it's pretty cool. OK, and you can feel free to go ahead and type this out with me. By the way, fun thing with Plunker, you get to use um, Emmet with Plunker. So if I was to do, instead of typing out h2, you know, you can say h2 dot instructions and hit tab, and it auto expands for you. It's pretty cool. You need this in Sublime or PHP Storm or WebStorm immediately. It's pretty cool. Yep, and you can, yes, you can use the little square brackets. Yeah, square brackets. Oh, totally, yeah, totally coincidence there. Yes, good, actually good call, because what we're going to be doing is pattern recognition from here on out with our brains, right? We're going to see a thing somewhere, and then we're going to line it up somewhere else. I can tell you're a programmer, because you're like, those two things are the same. Is there reason for that? And no, that's just my terrible, um, yeah, terrible choice. <laughs> so if we go to style, um, let's just go ahead and make our, I don't know, let's go make our instructions look beautiful. Um, I'm just going to go here to style.css. I'm just going to add a little margin to the top of it. Now, we're going to do something cool here. I really like foundation. You guys probably know this. You've known me for too long to not know that. But let's make this kind of pretty. Let's go back to our index.html. So we, we were able to pull in Angular really easily, right? Let's pull in Foundation. So let's go to our little uh, external libraries. This is totally just a plunker thing. 
Um, let's look for foundation. So I updated the library. Um, get ready, we're going to delete a lot of stuff here, so don't freak out when this happens. Click the little wand, the unmagical wand. Yes. Come on, add the thing, you... <clears throat> Hang on, sorry, this sometimes like gets all funky. Foundation is required, but not included. Update, do it. Do the thing... Ah, darn it, sorry guys, bear with me. Okay, sometimes this doesn't work. Oh, there we go, okay. There's, there's an update all little button that shows up here. If you click the, the eight symbol, sorry, um, go to the, what do you see? Okay, were you able to get this in here? Okay, when you click the little number up here, what do you get? And do you see Angular and or Foundation? Okay, add foundation. So look for foundation. Click the wand next to foundation. Okay, click the eight, and then click the update all. Sorry, it's I don't know why it's funky, but it's a way to get like a bunch of stuff, and we are not gonna use the vast majority of this, so don't freak out about all the lines that we just saw here. <laughs> okay, we can literally, everyone cool here? Let's wait up, I'm wait up just a little bit, make sure everyone's solid. All we really wanna get I'll wait up. I'll wait up. Does anyone need some time? Don't worry about that. That little guy, don't worry about that little guy. <laughs> yep. Okay, so what we are literally going to do here, does anyone need a little more time or any help? Okay, so do you have the little eight up here? Yeah, uh, Click the little, there, you should have a little link right here that says update all. Click that. I don't know why that magically works. Sorry, guys. Um, see, it didn't revert mine, which is weird. Uh-uh, no. Either way, um, it doesn't matter. Angular, whatever Angular, we're not doing anything fancy here with Angular that a version is really going to matter. So the deal here is uh, we're going to delete all of these scripts because they're jQuery scripts. We don't, we don't need them, okay? Um, just delete them. And so all you should have is the foundation CSS. This is what we care about. Okay, all we want is the CSS. And delete everything that is, oh, <laughs> I deleted my, <laughs> I deleted Angular, like, give me two seconds here. Technical difficulties. I think you can, but honestly this is really simple to add back in. There we go, Angular's back, super simple. Um, I'm going to put it. Scripts after style sheets. Yep, sure that. There we go. All right, so you should, at the end of the day, you should just have your foundation CSS, your style.css, your angular.js. Okay. All right, and we should see a little bit of a different. Style, okay, and absolutely. Uh, what would you like? Style.css. What would you like to see in style.css? There you go. No problem. And I'm literally just pulling foundation in, so we have a grid. We have some good base button and uh, text sizes and all a whole bunch of stuff we don't have to write. Yeah, literally, if you could just go find a CSS thing you want to link to, you can do that, too. Um, but yeah, instructions, I'm just adding a little bit of a margin to the top of it to make it, make it look pretty. Okay, and to really hit this home, HTML is our application, um, is our application structure, okay? And we're really going gonna to use it to its, its fullest extent here. Do you need any help over here? No. Do you have the update all thing? Oh, what do you, can I see what you've got since you're right here? Let's see it. Okay. So you've got script JS is running, instructions is there, style sheet is there. Okay, let's go to script. 
Interesting. What version of Angular? You've got Angular 1.3. That's very interesting. Okay. I want to make sure that everything adds correctly. Um, when you can tell she... Ah, you need to take the dash out of ng controller. Okay, so fun fact. We need to, hang on, let's do this uh, T. Hang on, let's see if this works. Let's go caps. Yeah, change that there. That'll bite you. Okay, yep. So fun thing, um, dashes to caps in Angular is a weird thing. I don't, it's... It's weird. Uh, try not to use dashes in any of your names. Uh, use camel case as much as you can, okay? Um, and there's a fun conversion there that we have to deal with. Don't worry about it right now. Take out dashes, go caps, we'll come back. Just keep right what we got. I can help you out. Okay. All right. Let's make some stuff happen here. Okay. So, um, where would we like to start? Let's go and... Um, Let's define like what a T looks like just so we can start playing with it and see it in action. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to I'm just gonna make a little T. I'm gonna call it new T. I'm gonna make it a little object. Okay? We're literally just gonna go represent our T as an object, okay? Got a name. No. T. Got a notes. I'm gonna do this just because I'm erotic. Okay. Some T notes. And it's got a pick. I'm just gonna leave that blank. Okay. So, just a standard JavaScript object, okay? Nothing, nothing super fancy here. Now, let's go see what this looks like. I'm just going to dump this out onto the page, okay? I'm going to delete the hello plunker so we get it out of the way. Hang on. New T. Hey, look at that. I had a JavaScript object. Woohoo. <laughs> okay, so the data's coming over. Doesn't look great. Um, let's go dress this up a little bit. Let's go make this look like um, make this look like a thing, okay? So We've got some data to work with. Let's get, I don't know, let's get our, let's get our, um, let's make a little template. Let's render this thing out, okay? Okay, I'm going to keep this super simple for now. H4. We're going to call it new t.name. A little p tag. Oops. I'm just spanning this. You can see this thing rendering out, right? We got some some real super basic stuff showing up on our page, which is awesome. IMG SRC. You see where this is going, right? And it's just this simple. And it's new t.pick, which is just going to be a URL. Okay, some notes. Got some notes. We don't have an image. Let's get a default image, right? Let's go grab um, a default image. I really like lorem pixel. You can grab any image on the internet you want. It just needs to be a URL. Okay, it's going to be this simple. I'm going to go to script.js. I'm going to paste it right there. Um, I actually like removing the HTTP. It allows the site to kind of determine its own protocol. Yep. What key combination are you using to expand? To expand Marfruno? I tap. 
<laughs> okay, so I just typed a bunch. I'm going to let you catch up. Okay? All I did was make a little new T object. Pretty cool. Hey, you made it. All I did was make a little new T object here in our controller. And then inside of our index, I'm just printing everything out. Okay, and just wrapping it in DOM in HTML. Pretty straightforward. I'm gonna leave this up for you guys to go uh, for you guys to type with. Okay? Super important. Go ahead and type it out. Were, were you able to get that stuff to render? Why would it do that? Okay, all right. Sweet. Okay, so does anyone want me to wait up a little bit longer? Need some more time? Type in HTML. All right, let's rock. Okay, so, hey, this simple, right? We're able to get an object into the page, and we're able to get this thing to actually uh, render, which is pretty cool. Um, that's just kind of magical to me, right? Like, I could be like, oh, I don't know, let's go change this to, like, five, because this is Lauren Pixel, so you just put in whatever number at the end. Magic. Ah, it's amazing. Okay, so, now, once again, that refresh over there was not Angular. That was Plunker manually refreshing the page and giving us a brand new um, brand new result. So, okay, let's let's do something a little different. Let's make an array of T's. It was one of the first things we wanted to define, right? We wanted um, a set of T objects, okay? So, I'm gonna cheat here. I'm literally just gonna call this Okay, arrays in JavaScript, bracket, square brackets, and we're literally going to just copy this one and put it in here, format it, and then let's do it again and change a few things, okay? Are we all clear on arrays of objects? Does anyone want a little bit of clarification on that? This was always kind of funky to me. Um, why there wasn't a, why there wasn't like a notation, you know, like coming from the PHP world. I'm just changing some notes here. And of course, we're not going to see any changes yet. Okay, now, what do we got here? I have a bunch of data. I have an array with two objects in it. I'm going to give you the chance to copy paste and edit a few things. Add one or ten or whatever, whatever you're comfortable with. But the important thing is start with a square bracket, put a comma between the object curly brackets, right? Object one. Object two, do not end with a comma. This will blow everything up. Yeah. And uh, I think, yeah, maybe. Maybe it's just I, I don't know. I've just been hit so many times with the comma ruler. Coming from PHP, right? Don't doesn't matter where your commas are, right? Put them, put them wherever. Um, okay. So we've got this little simple array. Let's have some fun. Okay. This is the cool part. I love this part. We're going to loop now, okay? We are going to just roll over this, uh, and we're going to do, technically, we are going to iterate, all right? Everyone here down with iteration just means roll, going over stuff, looping through it. Okay, um, I'm actually going to make this a UL, okay? Um, which means that inside of this thing is actually going to be an LI, okay? okay. Doesn't do us a whole lot of good, but here's our one list item UL, right? Okay, pretty cool. We actually have a really cool thing we can do here called ng-repeat. Now, I'm not going to get 
too into directives yet, but this is one of these cool things that Angular gives us that says, look, you just give me the data, I'll do all of the magic heavy lifting. There's no JavaScript for each, there's no dot each, there's no loop, no plus pluses. All we say is, look, I've got an array of stuff. Look at that. Got two things, magically. Um, so let's point out what's going on here. Teases are an array of objects. We have two of them. We're basically saying for every T in T's, change this to T. Okay. Did I get a T's in the span there? I did, yep. Okay. So, really important to point out, T singular, T singular, inside, because we are inside of this loop. So if we had 100 of these objects in the array, we would get 100 things printed out. Um, it lets us do some really cool stuff here, okay? Um, any questions on what just happened there? You guys need a little bit of time to type that out? Let's type that out. It will literally just, if you've got an iterator for 100, it'll print the same thing 100 times. Yeah, that burned me a few times. That, that missing S. Okay. So, um, I want to add in a fun little thing that comes with, uh, that comes with foundation. So I'm actually going to put in like a little, I'm going to put in a little button. So basically, I want a little button on every one of my T's to do stuff. It doesn't have to do anything yet, but we're just going to put a button on it, okay? It's a button. Um, class equals button and alert. These are all things that we get from foundation. There's no reason you should know this automatically. And I want this button to say remove T. Okay, so nothing fancy, but we get a little button, right, that lets us go like, I don't know, let's go delete this T or something, which is pretty cool. Okay, so yeah, pretty neat. Um, I'm going to add one more T to my file because I'm, I'm getting crazy here. Let's do this. Cool. All right. So all I did is, you know, I just added another object onto our array. We now have three things printing out. This is great. Okay, so Angular is repeating and printing a bunch of stuff out for us. That's awesome. Now, if we go back to our index, um, we just happen to have a cool class from Foundation called um, small dash block dash grid dash one space medium dash block dash grid dash three. Um, so, what did we talk about earlier, right? Earlier, we agreed there are no such things anymore. HTML is here to describe our application. Um, and we're going to get this gridded up here. Let's get this gridded up here. So, sorry, more stuff that doesn't really look good, but we need it. This is just some foundation helpers, so I'm just going to go dot row tab dot large dash 12 dot columns and these are just goodies we get with foundation Please work small block grid one, <laughs> um, small block grid one 
medium block red circle. Oh, I think I'm just too, am I just too? There we go. I'm just, it was just a little too small. Yeah, so just do this. I just have this. This is just gets us contained in the foundation world. It's just some styles. Okay. Oh. Sorry, we got to do some crappy HTML. Now, this has nothing to do with Angular. It has nothing to do with uh, JavaScript. This is just for to get a little bit of behavior. So we've got foundation, and if I just put this class on things, it allows every one of my allies below it to just behave really cool. So if I do this, I get a mobile layout, which is pretty rad, right? That's pretty cool. So, um, but let's keep it. Uh, let's keep it three up for now. Anyone need some more time to get that typed out? Uh, Lauren Pixum URL looks like this. Let's copy image URL. Um, yeah, so go 640 slash 480 slash abstract slash one. I'm looking for any Q&A questions. I don't see any questions yet, which is awesome. Okay, great. Cool, um, let's go back to it. Does anyone need any more time to type out our Rappy classes and our other stuff? Okay, so we just built a little repeater. We just gave it some data and we let it go crazy and it did everything for us. That was awesome, okay? Um, we didn't have to write any of this logic which is pretty neat. Okay, I'm going to make a little contrived example to kind of show you. Let's get this navigation bar in up at the top. We're going to treat this like a partial, like an include. Um, we've all templated before. We've all pulled in partials from other parts of our project, something.php, print here, right? Pretty common theming concept. So I want to make a navigation file. Let's just call it nav.html, okay? Click the new file over in your files list on the left-hand side. Let's call it nav.html. And literally, the only thing we are going to paste in here, we're going to keep it super duper simple. I'll let you type this out. We'll have time. Okay. Yes, I know, lots of HTML. But this is, yeah, it's going to be one of the, what's that? And it makes it really easy. You know, nav dot top bar bracket data top bar dot bracket. <laughs> Give you a little bit of time to, to fill that out. Was that called called you at four o'clock? Why? Teach, I don't know that. What is that a reference to? Is that some is that some cult, cultural thing? Oh man. So, good question. Uh, so the question was, um, is there ever an issue having the script tag basically inside of the body that also has the ng controller? Um, no, uh, because if you go up even further, there's an ng app that wraps everything, right? So, no, not an issue. And there's no other place to really stick scripts at the bottom of the page besides the closing body tag. Yeah, yeah. Can't go any lower than inside the body. Cool. Anybody need a little bit more time typing out this awful chunk of HTML? No?
All right, cool. And it doesn't, honestly, it doesn't really super matter what it looks like. This will just get you the magic foundation styles. So, okay, well, it doesn't show up. Well, that kind of sucks. Um, I don't know. What are we going to do here? I don't know. Let's get it, get it to show up. Uh, so we have a cool thing uh, that we get to use called um, ng uh, include. Okay. And it's its own tag. That's why I love it. Which shows you that Angular defines its own HTML elements. That's why this is really, really magical. Uh, sorry, not magical. Um, awesome is what I meant. And all you do is you just say, hey, yo, include my file dot HTML. Like it's there's no there's nothing here crazy at all. There's nothing here crazy. God damn it. All right, hang on. <laughs> Hang on, let me, let me see what's going on here. Ng include. Oh, ha ha. Okay, so why didn't that work? What's going on? I, I told it to go use the thing, right? Why is it being stupid? So this is one of those things that'll cause like veteran Angular developers to just like lose days. There is this silly little, there is a convention. There's a reason for it the way it's parsed. We have to put in single ticks inside of double ticks. And it has to do with the way that this thing is parsed and passed to, um, since this is loaded via Ajax, the way it gets into Ajax um, to grab it and then paste it back into the page, okay? So, is the right your own, exactly, your own custom thing. Um, so yeah, there you go, ng includes source equals nav.html. Pretty cool. Everyone got a header? Everyone got a navigation bar? Yay, congratulations on your foundation navigation bar. Okay, so let's, let's take it to the next level. Um, we, we really need to, um, let's add some T's. Let's get, a, let's get a form built. Forms suck, but we gotta build them. They're kind of, they're kind of a pain in the butt. So we're just gonna start with a single, just the T name, okay? inside of our index. So let's go build our form. It's awful, but we got to do it. Okay. And here we go. So we'll keep it real super simple for now. Okay. Form. Let's just have a nice little input. Okay. What we put here doesn't really super matter, but let's just say I've got a type equals text. I mean, that matters. Let's give it a little ID, whatever you want to call this. This is just going to be where we put in our T name. Okay. And we can put in like, I don't know, placeholder equals T name, right? It should show up nice and pretty like. Okay, now this, you know, if I go up here and I say, ah, okay, I'll type some T. Well, it doesn't do anything for us. Okay, that's fine. We'll show you some. Okay. This is that new T object that we defined, just printing out as raw stuff, okay? We're going to do our first data binding. Took me an hour and 15 minutes to get here, but this is the cool part of Angular, okay? We are going to tell Angular that basically this input form is tied directly to this name field on our object. This is the first time we're gonna do this. And it looks like this. You have this cool thing from Angular called ng-model. Whenever you see model, think data, okay? Model is data. And it's this simple, you just pass it the name of the object and the field. Okay, that should look, look fine. We've got our, we've got our, uh, what am I, what am I, yep, I'm on the wrong thing. Sorry, I looked up and put it on the wrong damn thing. Jeez, I meant to put it on the input form. What is wrong with this guy? Yeah, okay, wait a minute. My input form, my text box says T. What the hell's going on here? 
Why did it do that automatically? It's got stuff on it, right? Okay. So, really quick, everyone, make sure our little input form has an ng model of new t.name. New t.name comes from our new t object that we're just putting on the scope. Okay, we're just putting a thing on the scope, and then we're going to say this input is bound. Here's a cool part. Both ways. Watch this. Okay. The text field. It talks to the model and modified my model in real time. That's awesome. That's awesome. And actually, it's the other direction. So my model is actually able to to affect the text, the text input um, of that text field. That's super that's super duper cool. Um, let's do let's do this for the other two two fields that are on that are on, um, uh, that are on our team team object. Just, just copy just copy the whole thing. And of course, and of course, it is. Here's the cool, Here's part. The cool part. If we bind, bind the model in the same, model, the same model, just change everything, change everything at the same time. You can see you how this gets all the potential, the potential potential variable, variable here. Of having everything, of having everything, everything kind of together. together. But we don't want we don't want team to be no T notes. notes. And we want and it to be the um, new T dot T dot pick. Just like that, like that. We got our data, data model, 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 model. Basic, basic um, thing. Um, yeah, to show yeah, on the show on the real time, which is pretty cool. Sweet. 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 So, so, we need a button on that button. All right. All right. Uh, give you guys a little bit of time to continue typing. You guys get this typed out. Typed out. Oh, the sound off. Okay, have you been able to monitor it? Is it just now bad? Can you hear it? Okay, let me, uh, let me try something really quick. Hang on, I'm going to try to unplug. Okay, hang on. Let's do this. Can you guys hear me? Does that sound better? Do I, I, I can see my green lighting up, actually. Sweet. We're going to use the internal mic now. All right. Playing it by ear today. Let's do it. Okay. So um, I'm going to change my IDs on these form items just to kind of represent more what they are. Okay. It's HTML. Lots of stuff. Okay. T. Notes. T. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's make a submit button. It's a form. You don't have to get too fancy. All right, and we know how to make input type equals submit. Okay. And we just need it to say value equals add team. All right, so we got our little button. I'm going to make it look pretty because we have foundation. So let's just go class equals button tiny s expand. Okay. All right. So we've got an we've got a, a button to add stuff. Now, nothing's going to happen yet. We need to tell this thing to go do something on uh, on submit. Okay. 
So what's cool is because Angular likes to use what comes with HTML, and when we already submit forms on the internet, we have this idea of a form action already. Anyone who's written a form by hand knows that there's a form action. Um, we're actually able to say, okay, form um, ng dash submit. This is the new thing we get. We have not defined this. We probably would not have just come here and just written this thing directly on the form, but we do know, but we do know we're going to need to run a function, right? We're going to need to go, when I press this button, I need to go do something with this function automatically. Okay, so... Chris, so does that replace uh, form action? That's exactly it, right? And all you do is you stick it on your parent form, and what's brilliant about Angular is it takes all your values inside here and it passes it to this function. Can someone tell me what this function probably looks like? Okay, but what does the what does the form look like? Tell me, or sorry, the uh, what does the stuff what does the text actually look like for um, for that function? Like if I was to start typing it right now, what would I start typing? Scope. Ah, that's that's the important thing. Is all we're doing now. We've talked about putting data on our scope. That's pretty straightforward. I need some text. We're putting functions on our scope now that we're able to call inside the scope. This is awesome. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to safety equals uh, function. Um, and it actually doesn't really need anything passed to it. Always oh, ending the semicolon for defining it this way. OK. Um, let's do this. I'm bad with, um, <laughs> with array syntax. So we've got t's, plural, OK? And we are going to go. Uh, Go dot t's. Um, what's the uh, how do I add to the end of, a, of an array? Push. Thank you. What am I pushing? Uh, I'm glad you said that. And here's why. In the jQuery world, what would we do to get those values out of the form? You go grab the value, assign it to an array, and push it. In. Right, right. We would literally say, we would say, hey, I'm jQuery. Ah, form dot thingy dot HTML or dot value, form dot thingy dot value, form dot thingy dot value. And then we would get into some kind of thing and then we'd go off and push it. But we don't have to do that. What is holding the values of our form right now? It's already available to us in data. That's what's that. This was the part of of Angular that just made me go like, "Oh my God, this is incredible!" Because the this new T object right here already is storing new values for us. So check this out. We're literally going to say scope. T. We're going to say scope dot new. Okay. So let's try it. All right, I'm going to add some notes. Actually, I'm going to start by deleting everything here. That's important. Okay, just so we start empty. Okay. Blah, 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 blah. More pixel. Okay, here we go. Moment of truth, I'm going to hit submit. Live demo time. Yeah, that's right. OK, what just happened there? How did it, how, I didn't tell it to print. Why did, what's going on? Anybody down here? Um, so you added it to the array, right? And we're outputting the array to stage. So if you add something, it's probably going to that's it. And that's what's amazing about Angular. If the data changes, it just re-renders at this level, right? We just changed some data. Let's go add something new. Let's go add something totally new. Where is new T being added to the T's array? Good question. Oh, uh, OK. I see it there. So what we're doing is we're saying, hey, this array, which is actually just this guy right here, right? These two things are the same. 
push, which is the JavaScript term for adding onto the end of an array, um, add on to that this little object. Now, this object is unique every time. So if I want to be like, you know, new DMET, hello, this T, I want to give it like a new, I don't know, color or something, um, a new image, I can hit add T, and it actually won't. <laughs> So that actually brings. Yeah, you didn't add a new one. You call. Okay. So you'll notice what happened was the. This is still this object down here. So this is something got to be really careful about when it comes to uh, when it comes to Angular because I'm not just filling in fields and then shoving them into a thing. No, these two things are two-way bound together forever, right? So I have to literally manually reset this thing and get it to go, get it to clear out. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep, ah, can't get away from it, right? Like, I'm stuck. I'm always going to be editing it. Um, even, even, if I delete the values, I'm still representing on this perfect little slice, okay? Which is great. Okay, guys, so we've been here for an hour and 20 minutes. And you can see we've got a scaffold of the project going. We've got a grid of stuff. We're screwing with data. We're seeing it show up on the page in real time. I'm going to keep going. If anyone needs to bounce, it won't hurt my feelings. I won't make you stick around. I won't make you hang out. But we're going to add a little bit more functionality. If you want to see that, feel free to hang out. I'm going to go for like another 30 minutes. If you do need to bounce, that's cool too, all right? But if you want to see more, let's do it. Really quick, is there any part of the demo or the project the, that you saw earlier that you would like me to focus on right now for the last 30 because I'm going to get into the reset button. I'm going to get into, um, I'm going to kind of stay away from the local storage because that gets into some funky stuff we don't really super care about. But yeah, does anyone want to see any particular part of the application? I'd love to see how to reset the uh, form. Uh, okay, let's do that right now. Okay, so good point. Let's go to index.html. Let's add a uh, just a good old-fashioned link in there. Um, we're going to call it... Uh, Thanks, much. Thanks, guys. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Um, reset form. Yeah, it, it can be anywhere. Actually, I'll, I'll take it out of the form just so it's a little clearer. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we got ourselves we got ourselves a button. Okay, we got ourselves a link right here, and we're ready to rock. Um, let me make this. Uh, okay, so I just made a little I just made a little um, link at the bottom of the form. You'll notice that my T exploded. It went away as soon as I refreshed this page. We're not saving this to any kind of a persistent state yet, which is totally okay. Um, but let's make this reset form do something. We probably know that when we click it, we want to do a thing, right? Let me show you a new thing in Angular. Um, the form gave us this cool built-in thing called ng-submit. Okay, just Angular knows we're going to be dealing with forms a ton. This is really great to do. Um, we also have a great thing built in called ng-click. Yep, no joke. So, remember the days of binding, right? You know, thingy.on or even thingy.click in, in the jQuery world. We don't do that anymore. We don't say when this thing is clicked, go do something. Instead, we just say, look, here's a function. You happen to click it, go run it, that's cool, whatever. I'm just going to call this reset key, okay? And it's going to do nothing. But, cool thing, it does, not re it does not reload the page by default, which is awesome. They know, they know you never actually want to go somewhere else in Angular if you've got an ng-click on it. So, but let's go make a little function, okay? What does what, what does that function look like? Uh, 
so? What is your computer doing? It's yeah. Low battery. You're about to lose battery. You want to plug? Uh, I hope, yeah. Okay. All right. So we've got scoped out reset T. Um, now, what's cool here is, yeah, I think it does have a, uh, you can pass a function to it, but we don't need it because we already know our scope, right? We already have goodies on the scope that we can use. So all we're doing here is we're literally just going to do this. Actually, why don't you tell me? What would I do to blow away this object, to wipe it out? Um, and set everything to like nothing inside of each field. Wait, just for the form? Yeah, just or yeah, I'm gonna reset the form, but what am I actually resetting? We're well, changing the values. Right? We're changing the values, yes. Of new T. New T. Right. Okay. So it's literally, once again, we're gonna change data, not values. I'm not going to the input fields and saying HTML or a value equals null, null string. I'm actually just going to say new t equals name, notes. Okay. How cool is that? All we're doing, so watch it, watch out, check this out. This is cool. This is cool, this is cool. Watch this, watch this. Here we go. T name. Something, I don't know, some, whoops, that's the wrong thing. Let's paste you in instead. And I'll make you number nine. Okay, and we're going to add it. There it is. Okay. Let's reset it. It's gone. Let's add a new one. Another T, maybe? T, no, it's. Ta-da! Congratulations on your application. That's simple. Have I selected a single element in this entire project? No. I'm not, I don't care about the DOM. I don't care about HTML. I don't care what my things look like. I don't even care what really happens when something is clicked. This thing has no idea that it's a click event, right? This reset T literally has no idea that it's being called on a click. The cool part is, is I can just go call this from anywhere. It's just a super generic function. All it cares about is my scope, right? Um, neato. Okay. Adam, yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> is there a way to create your scope that needs to be equals MTU array contact in both places without having to? Okay, so wh uh, what I would do is I would have a function that would go valid. So we could do this. Here, let's actually, this is a great example to go demo. Not everything has to be on the scope. Let's go make it just a function function. Everything in JavaScript, uh, JavaScript loves functions. Let's do this, okay? Let's call um, var new uh, t unk equals function. Okay, we're going to keep this really super simple. Okay, so this is just a function like any other in JavaScript, okay? New T function. Okay, so nothing's working right now. We don't have any, you know, so we don't have any data, right? We don't have an object. It's not printing out. So watch this. Let's do this. When we go to start our page, okay, son of a, oh, it's a, uh, hang on, oh, I, ha I have to put it below my definition currently. I don't know. Okay, so just to really to point out what's going on here, this is has no bearing on Angular. It's just a, a generic uh, JavaScript function, which shows you you can just use functions. You can use variables. You can use whatever inside of the scope thing. And then when we start the project, we call it. And then here in reset t, do the same thing. New t. Okay. So let's go fill one in. 
Add T, kick ass. Reset form, kick ass. Now, even better, what about when I add a T? Okay, so let's not even have to worry about resetting. Boop, 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 boop. We'll add one. There it is, it's gone, right? Just like that. And good, good question, right? We're able to abstract this function out where we're like, oh, I don't want to keep declaring that every single time. And man, wouldn't it be cool that when I saved my T, I could just automatically not have to deal with that. And then every single time we get a brand new object to go play with because we're just blowing it away each time in JavaScript, which is super, super cool. Um, yeah, OK, let's do this. Um, and of course, this goes away when we refresh because this is what our local storage looks like. Um, if you guys have the actual demo out and you scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see uh, T storage. It's this just enormous, it's this big thing that goes and saves things to HTML5 storage, which is kind of, it's cool, but I think it's a little beyond what we want to do tonight. Let's do this. Let's delete one of these things when we click the button, okay? This is cool. This is super cool. So we're going to, when I click remove T, I want it to actually go and, um, uh, delete that exact T. So check this out. If I go back to index.html, let me see. I've got I've got 15 minutes. All right. I promise to only keep you 15 more minutes. If inside of my repeater, what do you think I want to add here? Ng click. What do we want to call it? Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Remove T. All right. Or T remove, okay. Remove T. Um, now, let's go make that. So I'm just going to go, okay, what does remove T look like, guys? Remove T. I just want to alert and be like, hang on just a sec. We're gonna... Boom, okay. So, uh, yes, I'm dumb. Shush, I'm shush, shush you. All right, here we go. <laughs> okay, so let's see. I didn't do anything. Hang on. Remove T. Yep, that. What am I doing wrong? Hang on. Okay. Did that, is that not right? I, I can tell I'm getting tired. Did you, what am I missing? Look at the okay. Let's let's play pattern recognition here. Oh, oh, friends, here we go. Friends are in now. Boop. It's a function call. Okay. How cool is that? All right. So function call. That's awesome. But we haven't deleted anything yet. So let me refer to my notes and take a look at what this is actually doing. So what's cool is one of the things that we get in our repeater, whenever we are inside of ng-repeat at all times, we actually have a cool, just a shared little, uh, a, a provided variable called index. Okay, so it's this simple. Um, an index is the position of the thing being repeated. So the first thing is zero, the second thing is one, the third thing is two. Okay, we start from zero. So if I do this and I go to script.js, I can actually alert out index. I'm actually just going to pass it as a static thing, function. And we go index. So let's take a look here. And this should be zero, this should be one, and this should be two. Okay, pretty cool. So we know where we're at in the array. You can probably guess where we're going from from here, right? So check this out. Let me actually see how I'm doing this. Uh, let's go. Let me remove it. Um, yeah, that's exactly what we're doing. I like to pretend that I could just do this from heart, but not nah, not even happen. Okay, so we have uh, scope dot t's. That's all right. Uh, we get a cool thing that's built into JavaScript, just JavaScript default called splice, which lets us um, play with an array. And splice says um, from position zero, 
uh, from position index, bear with me. Yes, starting at index, delete, we only want one thing deleted. Okay. That's it. Okay, this is all we're doing. I want to point this out. Okay, my array, splice it, and that just means we take this array and we cut one little thing out of it. From the index, delete one thing. And let's find out what that does. And here we go. Okay, all we're doing is messing with data once again. And how neat is this? Even, hey, let's see if this works on new stuff, right? Okay, add the T, remove the T, just like that. So what you're saying is, if these were nodes and you had REST set up, you could make your API call in these functions, and it's all these. So then it doesn't matter. Whenever the data just happens to come back, I mean, that's what's cool about it. It's like, I can be like, hey, go do this thing. And then whenever, and it just happens to, if data ever changes, which is why, like, login functions are so great asynchronously with this, because click it, I don't know, I might have the, the special pop-up, you know, if you're logged in, and it doesn't matter if it happens immediately or, like, 10 seconds from now. It'll just eventually happen when the data changes. Um, yeah, this is cool. So that's pretty much it, and we can get into, you know, I, I want to show you one thing before we bounce, and that is actually the, the function signature of a controller. It's actually not usually this uh, straightforward. <laughs> um, and the reason for it is we want to be able to tell our controllers what... Uh, what they might need. So it's really common to have things like window, HTTP. Um, basically, they're just are they're, they're cool other parts of Angular that let us go do stuff. And we're able to say, like, look, get them injected in here. But there's a problem. If, and, I, and we all should be, if I minify this JavaScript, who here wants a quick minification explanation? Okay, um, when this goes to production, it should not have all of my notes in it, it should not have all my white space, it should not have all of my huge variable names, okay? Uh, we have things like gulp and grunt and all these other cool tools that will just crush the living heck out of our JavaScript and turn it into the tiniest possible little bits so that when it's on the server, it's super fast, and it's super, super quick to load. But there's a problem with minification. In the current state, all of these things are going to get printed out. Like, there's, you can't minify it like this. So, the guys at Angular figured out if we instead provide an array, please bear with me here. I'm going to screw this up. Okay. Uh, right between the thing. Okay. I want to point out what just happened here. I'm saying controller, your named T controller, and now you get an array, okay? Nothing's working yet, and that's okay. The last thing in the array is a function. Let's, one more time, what's going on here? The controller had two arguments before, which was a random string, just a string of the controller name, and a function. That's really straightforward. I named this, run this function. Instead, if you give the controller a string and then an array, you name your very, your dependencies. Son of a. <laughs> yes. See, slate. I just want to point out you're going to see this, and it's going to be incredibly confusing. And this is actually where we lose a bunch of people in Angular, is these two lines right here, OK? I see people jump into this. They go, that's crazy, and they eject, and they miss out on this awesome world of cool stuff. Yeah, like, I'm out, pull the lever. And when I saw this the first time, I was like, I do not know what's going on here. And the reason for this, after hours of podcasts trying to figure out what's going on, is now instead of sending the controller a function here, you're sending it an array. Angular smart enough goes, aha, I have an array. It knows that these things are the string names that line up perfectly 
scope, scope, window, window, HTTP, HTTP. So now when we go minify, uh, if we use Grunt or Gulp or even some other things that are in Angular that are available to us, now it knows, oh, when I go minify this, I can call this the letter A. I can call this the letter B. I can call this the letter C. And then my JavaScript becomes completely unreadable, but it becomes minified, right? This is just a convention to allow our stuff to be um, uh, highly minified later on, okay? So you'll see this. Don't be afraid. This is the name of the controller. These are the things that we need to use. Here's what's, here's what's really important to point out. Controllers, if I remove the scope, if I don't declare that I'm using scope, I, Angular doesn't know. We have to tell, like, and that's what's great about Angular. We say, I need these four pieces. Give them to me. Go find them for me. And Angular goes, oh, okay. Uh, you need this feature of Angular. You need the HTTP feature of Angular. You need the window feature. Like, we now have the idea of, um, you know, real-time loading of stuff on the back end so we don't have to load everything all at once. Um, also, super duper important, we also have the concept of stubbing and testing. So if I need to go test this controller, I can give it whatever I want here and go test. I'm not beholden to the fact that this has to be in a real application, in a real window that's being run in a browser. I can just give it whatever and then test that and then expect a value. And so Angular actually is, is all about test, like test-driven development. You start with your test, and then you code until that test pass, passes, which is pretty cool. I have not done it personally yet, because I'm uh, I come from the Drupal world, where testing is an afterthought. Wait, what? Oh, we, I wish I could test in my day-to-day, -day, right? I wish I could. I know, I know, I know. Where are you ending that array? Yeah. You're ending it? Yes. Yeah. So follow follow along here. We got paren, uh, square bracket, squiggly bracket, right? Okay. And let's go back. Squiggly bracket, square bracket, paren. Yeah, it's ugly. It's awful. Okay. Yep. And I'm sure I could actually nest this better so we would see everything nested. Technically, I could take this function. Technically the function should be right there, okay? That's, that's just, you know, super unreadable, but uh, yeah. yeah. So don't let the big scary um, uh, dependency injection scare you right there, so, yep. It's probably also worth knowing that's really important to know and to be able to recognize that if you're using something in NFI, there's also tools that will turn more readable format into that so that it can be minified. Right, you can go back, right? You can go, you can go from minified back to this, which is super duper important. Um, I want to I wanna pull some out here really quick, just to kind of go from my, my example, which is a lot more filled out. I wrote a thing called editing service, okay? which is basically, if you have to do a whole bunch of logic, ifs, thens, state tracking, all that stuff, you don't do it in your controller. Your controller is simply there to take data and functions and put it in your view. That's it, okay? If you need to do a bunch of logic and thinking and, and ifing and thening, you use a service, and this is called a, this is a factory service, where you go and you go do a bunch of your logic junk, and then, this is what's cool, I have a factory called editing service, because I want to know, am I editing? What should change? Am I editing? Am I not editing? Then, I can inject it into my controller. So I just went and I made my little thing that does a lot of work for me, nice little package. Am I editing? Which one am I editing? Which should be highlighted? Uh, should I reset? Should I not reset? Um, I put it right here, and now I have this little object, and I can just go use it. Get state. Am I editing? Is editing. Editing service dot is editing. Editing service dot stop edit, right? And so when I do things like I'm here, and I hit reset, that should go away. My editing service is doing that for me. So I just extracted that logic out into the same thing. Okay, I've had you guys here for two hours. 
Um, you're all looking antsy. So thank you very much for uh, coming and kicking ass at Angular. Any questions? Uh, let me see if there's anybody left in the Hangout. I see two viewers in the Hangout. Huge turnout tonight. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> You're, are you in the Hangout? No, and Anton. I don't see any questions coming over in the... Something terrible with the sound all of a sudden. Applause. Okay, got it. Okay, thanks, guys. We will be here again on the third... Thursday in November, uh, I have moved group work is going to be talking about the group work being, uh, uh, thanks to the being no, the four things. It is the week before Thanksgiving. So we're going to be talking about the group of 18 classy, which puts all of the classes that you're these shoes back to uh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>